Hello, and welcome to another Tactical Analysis through FM23. I'm going to buy FM24 and make this a bit more relevant soon enough, but at the minute I just can't really be asked to deal with the beta. But regardless, let's get on to the topic of the video. I was watching the Chelsea Arsenal game yesterday, and Chelsea sprung a new formation. As you can see here, it could be lined up as this, or if you want to interpret it differently, it would be two strikers, but with the role false nine. Cole Palmer, Conor Gallagher played those roles, as is demonstrated here. And it just got me thinking about that system as a whole, and and it's not revolutionary. It's been around for... I mean, people say it came around with the Messi invention, which was played a bit differently, which was if we just have Cole Palmer playing the role of Lionel Messi for a second. I was going to put it as Conor Gallagher, but no, that's probably best to do Cole Palmer just for my own sanity. The two wingers would play wide, but Messi or Palmer in the role of Messi would drop off into this position here, look to receive the ball... Uh, utilize the, the fact that the wide players stayed wide, splitting the defense as much as they could, and it left with the defenders in a realm of, do we stay, do we go? Let's say if Conor Gallagher in this position is messy, okay, I'm doing it anyway. Then Cole will uh, then maybe goes to close him down up here. Mudrick, play, being the wide player, then has that room to cut in, and that's sort of where it was at its core. It was around long before that, by the way. It was a massive thing in Italy. As much as Italy's not viewed as the sort of a tactical destination nowadays, back in the sort of late 90s, early 2000s, it was the go-to destination. Uh, innovative mostly in tactics, and and the best players would go there. And you had the likes of Francesco Totti at Roma, who was a false nine. He, was, he wasn't a striker in the pure sense. He had players like Alessandro Del Piero. You know, there's, there's a list of them. Italy was a bit more reflective. Then you had players like Gianfranco Zola, who... Didn't really find a home in Italy, but came over here and and, and helped revolutionise the game. And you had false nines that played with strike partners in Dennis Bergkamp and Eric Cantona that were coming to England in the 90s. So it's not new, but how it's sort of implemented now is, is its own brand of it. And there's a common thing in football where it's often said amongst players, there's nothing new, it's just everything's been done before, but with a different bit of... A different look. It's it's the same room, it's just a different wallpaper, almost. So you can't do anything new, you can just sort of reinvent it, I guess. But what we didn't see back in the day were the two false nines. And, and that is something that's been around over the last few years. I, I first saw it, again, I don't think this is the first example, but this is the one that sticks out in my head. When Manchester City lost Sergio Aguero and they dealt with the two false nines because they didn't have a go-to striker. And... I think it's something that needs to be utilised more. But the thing that you need to come at this with, if you're going to play this, and say Conor Gallagher and Cole Palmer, which I don't think are two perfect players for the role. I think Cole Palmer can grow into that. I don't think Conor Gallagher is the perfect player. But your wide players need to be serious goal-scoring threats. They need to get about 15 to 20 goals a season, assuming they play the appropriate amount of games. And that's where this system could fall apart, is you these players need to be so key on the movement. And Sterling, I think, has got the experience of playing that system with City. Um, you know, his movement is fantastic. And and there's one bit of play yesterday in the game that really, really um, shone a light to me on how well this system can work. Cole Palmer dropped into this position here, and he took Gabriel with him. So if we say Cole Palmer, uh, a, a Tiago Silva plays the role of Gabriel here. He dropped into this position here, and then Sterling was able to create that movement inside into that position here. So, it's probably best demonstrating it down here. Um, we'll swap these two about again. Nope, this is going well. God, oh, this is organised. Sterling was up here. Zinchenko would come up to this position to press Sterling. And what this did was leave this position here. Once he got the running of Zinchenko, which he did, this is going to bring me on to a topic in a minute, he had this space to run into. And this diagonal movement, cutting in, is where the danger is. And this is... Uh, why strikerless formations can be such a success is fullbacks nowadays in the top of Zinchenko are probably as poor defensively as they've, as they've ever been. The modern fullback is a is a wide player. He's an attacking wide player. He's a midfielder. He's a hybrid combo of the three. And as a result, I don't think the the requirements to be a top draw defender are as there anymore as they used to be. So, wide players now with decent one-on-one -on -one ability that Sterling has, and I think a confident Mudrick may have, it's not the, the challenge anymore to be able to beat those players, get use their pace, get down to the byline, uh, and exploit the space and behind. And the strikerless two, in 
Gallagher and Palmer create the indecision for the centre backs. As we went over with Thiago Silva and Colwell, uh, Gabriel and Saliba didn't really know what to do. Saliba played brilliantly up against Erling Haaland, big physical striker that he could match in power, pace, uh, brain. You know, it was a one-on-one battle. It was clear. Whereas in here, you're almost done by default. Do you drop off and do you allow Cole Palmer the space in between the lines? And I'm using Cole Palmer as an example because I think he was the uh, more dangerous player in between the lines. Because Gallagher is a great player and he'll do whatever you ask him to, but he's not a player that's going to hurt you uh, technically. Um, so do you drop off? You allow him to have the space, then you allow him to pick the angles for the pass in between the full backs and centre backs for uh, for the wide players, or do you step up? and leave the space in behind, which then creates an easier run for the wide players. And especially if a, if the false nine is a great dribbler of the ball uh, and a great press-resistant player, which Cole Palmer looks to be, then you leave yourself exposed in a one-on-one situation where you know a player that maybe doesn't have the mobility, a centre-back that struggles in that front, uh, would get done. And Gabriel did get done a few times in that position. He didn't like the battle with Cole Palmer. He didn't like where Cole Palmer took him to. And he doesn't have the recovery pace and the mobility to be able to run back into position once he gets beaten. And another asset that makes this uh, quality work and this this formation work is this player that drops in being press resistant is huge. And Cole Palmer has got this physique that's a little bit awkward. He's a tall player for the position, but he's decently framed, but he's almost just got that awkward gangly build that makes him hard to... Like, he'd be a nightmare, I think, to try and get... If he puts his back up against you, you can't sort of move around him. And that ability to hold players off, and then the technical ability to shift the ball around the corner, to, to almost play something no look, and to find the angles that he needs to, just will unlock a defence. And Chelsea did a fantastic job of that. The wide players did their bit, um, you know, to, to exploit the space and behind and out wide, and Arsenal tried to sit narrow, but then also they, they brought the pressure onto themselves with the the indecision in the centre backs. The full backs got done one on one time and time again, and you have to have two confident players in behind those two to form the box in Caicedo and Fernandez to be able to have the confidence and composure on the ball to drag maybe the pressing midfield players towards them to allow more space for these two players if the centre backs are going to drop off as well. So. I think the main point of why this formation works so much is just the indecision and the and and the confusion it can create amongst the opposition. There will be space created, you know, uh, unless you sit deep, unless you sit narrow, unless you sit tight, you'll find it struggle to uh, a struggle to sort of exploit that. But again, there will always be that player in a position that nobody's quite sure how to pick up, and you still create the space for wide players. And it'll be interesting to see if Pochettino carries this on with Chelsea. Um, you know, it was very much uh, in the vein of a Brighton performance where the two players drop in uh, and the two wide players sit wide, sit high, and are the main source of the attack and threat. So let's see if this continues going forward. But also, it's just a formation I'd like to see. Or I'd say I'd like to see try more, but it is being tried more. It's becoming a very, very popular, almost vogue style to, uh, style to play nowadays. You know, Brighton have popularised it, City have done it. And, and, you know, we see Pochettino trying his hand at it now. But let me know what you guys think. And thank you guys for watching. Bye-bye for now.